Okay guys, so a little bit to elaborate upon the post earlier on about how training in the morning was apparently worth triple the time training later on in the day. Um, also about how our energy level was fluctuating and changed throughout the day. Now, I can remember I first heard this, it was Mario Hagona who mentioned it to me and we were talking on the subject of Tensho. He was taken through it and he, he just, he, it was quite an off the cuff comment about how he likes to practice the breathing catheter in particular in the morning because he believed that you got a lot more value training in the morning. This was echoed elsewhere. I was also told um, similar from Sakiyama Sensei, the um, the Reverend Zen priest, who was a pre-student, pre-war student of Chojin Miyagi. He told me that every morning he likes to start the day with Sanchin and Tensho, and he actually did this lying down in his bed. So as soon as he'd wake up, he'd lie in his bed and he'd actually do a, a version of Sanchin actually lying down and he'd, he'd go through the whole thing. Um, and he said, you know, at the time he was, he must have been in his 80s. This was in 2003. I do believe he's just died um, and he, he was just shy of 100. So he would have been probably in his 80s at the time. But he believed very strongly in training in the mornings as well. Across all the arts, if you look at all the Chinese literature, whether it's related to Tai Chi, whether it's related to the external styles, there was a huge emphasis upon training in the early hours. Especially as the sun starts to rise, you start to see that mist on the ground. So what is the importance of training at that time of the day? Okay, I'm not going to give you all the answers because this, this one question set me on a path that occupied a, probably a, a good 10 years of searching for answers around it. And the search for answers caused me to research so many different areas. Now the person, you know, this was also um, reiterated by Richard Barrett, who would pose us these questions. One being, you know, why do you always turn counterclockwise in your San Chin? So if you do the version of the San Chin, which has the turns in, why is the turn always counterclockwise? Why in, for example, um, San Seru, why in Super Lempe is it also counterclockwise with the turns? Whereby we step across with a right, and turn about the left foot. What is the relevance? Is there any relevance? But these questions being posed to me caused me to start researching subjects such as feng shui, subjects such as um, traditional Chinese medicine, subjects such as Taoism, Buddhism, Hinduism, researching the, the ancient civilizations throughout India, Looking at all these ancient beliefs, cultures, ideas, philosophies. And as a result of trying to find the answer to this one question about why is it so important to train in the morning, it caused me to find out all this other cool stuff, which underlies and becomes the foundation of the art as a whole. Like I say, there's, there's different ways of looking at it. You know, you can look at the art as a collection of physical skills, fighting techniques, a method of you know getting stronger but I kind of think you know most of you guys on here you you guys are a little bit older you're like me maybe you know approaching middle age and maybe even older still whereby the the physical aspect is not the overall single most important thing anymore the ability to defend yourself is no longer a single most important thing well now we're training for a different reason now we're training to benefit health we're training to benefit the mind. We're training purely because it's an interesting subject and we've devoted so many years of our lives to it. And the further you get down the path, the the less interested you are in becoming stronger, faster, tougher, whatever it might be, the more interested you become in these underlying factors and, and, and answers their questions to the wires of the art. You know, so this these two questions that I posed to you guys this morning the reason I posed them was for two reasons, really, because, you know, there may be some of you read it and think, like, oh, what, what does it matter? You know, and that's the end of it. But there may be some of you who read these questions and you're like, yeah, that, why is that? And this, uh, this causes you to go upon a path of discovery and research and reading. And as a whole, you then grow as a human being, which is what the martial arts is all, all about. Okay. Um, okay, so just to throw a couple of a couple of hints out there, 
okay? Um, we can look at Chinese medicine and we can look at how the circulatory system of the, of the body, of the blood and the breath replicates that of the sun and the moon. So if we look at a solar cycle, we look at the lunar cycle. Now how does this influence our energy systems? How does this influence our mood? How does it influence our testosterone, our estrogen? Okay, those two hormones right there, testosterone and estrogen, your answers will be found within those. So look at how testosterone levels peak or fall during the day. Look at how cortisol levels, which is your stress hormone, look at how that peaks and falls during the day. Look as well at what happens if you were to train late at night with a, a highly stress-inducing training modality, whether it be you know arm banging, whether it be qigong, which is very you know revving up the system and getting it almost into that fight or flight. What happens to our cortisol then? Some of you guys may have experienced even where, you know, I mean, most of us train that. If you, if you go to a set class, back in the days when we were allowed to do set classes, probably now we're in the evening, right? Let's say you finish, you finish class maybe 9.30, something like that, home at 10. And then for the rest of the night, you're trying to go to sleep, but you're wired. You're too wired to be tired. So then you get no sleeping done. This is kind of whenever I go to visit KO and the guys over in New York, this is... I'll get no sleeping done because we train in the night. And KO is a very, a very unique way of training you that, you know, you, you get that fight or flight response and it's very stress inducing, but it's also very invigorating. So you end up kind of quite charged and then you'll find yourself 3am, 4am, still staring at the ceiling thinking, God, am I ever going to get to sleep now? So again, if we look at that, you know, is that something that should be done earlier on in the day to coincide with our fluctuation, fluctu fluctuating energy and hormone levels? Okay, so we can look at that. And this all ties in as well with Mario Hagona's latest statement about energy levels dropping around 1 p.m. between 1 and 3. So you can look at it from the, the Chinese medicine angle with regard to the, um, the two-hour cycles of our energy and how it passes through the internal organs. Or you can look at it from a Western perspective and a, and a modern um, scientific angle whereby we're looking at hormones. Okay. Overall, it depends how interested you are in this sort of stuff and how um, important it is to you to align your training modality with your energy levels to be able to optimize your performance. And when I talk about optimization of performance, I don't mean your ability to do the physical activity and training. I mean your ability to actually recover from it and then have a life that is conducive to the art so that the art does not start infringing upon your life through lack of sleep, through adrenal fatigue, through just burning you out, which if you do this art of Goju-Ru right, it can happen. You know, there's many stories even within within the southern mantis systems of, of people, you know, losing their mind and, and getting almost like mental health issues, getting aggression issues, because it's such a stressful system. It's, such, it's, it's, it's a system that really wires you and charges you up. And if you don't know how to harness and how to bring that back down again, it can be a problem. The I put a post out the other day about um, about Yoy, how Yoy is just not, it's not just a formality. And if you look on the picture, you know, I tried to display it as best I could at that time about the, the, the visual change in the face. So there's a change as you come from your ear of normal to this charging up. Now the charging up is not, it's not pulling the face. You know, you're, you're not just trying to look tough or something like that. You're, you're, it's a physical representation of what you're doing inside your body. So how to actually charge the system, how to rev up, how to induce a, a, a state of fight or flight, how to get a little bit of adrenaline release, how to get the blood speeding up, how to then control your breath under that stressful situation. Because what happens in fight or flight, I say heart rate speeds up, non-essential systems start to shut down. Breathing starts to become sporadic and shallow. Now, we're trying to induce all those things within your San Chin, but the main difference is we're controlling and slowing the breathing. So even though underneath the hood, everything's kind of manic externally, 
the breathing is still under control. We still have control of that system because if we can control the breathing, we can control what's going on elsewhere and we can um, temper it somewhat so it doesn't get out of balance, out of order and ultimately become our detriment. So if we can learn to do it within a very controlled situation of our San Chin, when we then transfer that to an actual external problem, whether it be sparring, kote kitai, sandangi, whatever it is, or, you know, God forbid, a real fight. If we've been there enough times and been able to replicate as close as possible the stressors and the, the feelings and the physiological changes that we go through during that situation, when it's not so alien to us because we encounter it every day through training. However, if you are tr if you are truly able to harness this stuff and put it into your kata, then we run the risk of burnout. So then you see the importance of how we then need to combine our training with our lifestyle and learn how to bring ourselves down if we are learning how to charge ourselves up. Okay. Anyway, just some food for thought around the post this morning. Um, if you have any specific questions around it, ask. I may answer. I may just nudge you towards somewhere where I think would be interesting for you to research. Uh, but it depends on the type of question. Okay. I don't wanna. I don't wanna just give you answers and cause barriers to come down. So it's like, oh right, that's what it is. It might not be. Okay, so search, find your own answers, come up with your own conclusions. But as long as you're asking the right questions, then you're going to find out all this other cool stuff that you weren't even looking for. Okay, have a good week, guys, and I'll speak to you soon.